I'm Ken Whiting, and this week on Paddle Tales, we're taking a trip down the lower Madawaska River in Ontario's Highlands, one of the most beautiful sections of whitewater in the country. This is the second part of my journey from instructor to student as I try solo whitewater canoeing for the first time. Although I've been paddling whitewater for over 30 years, I know this is going to put my paddling skills to the test, and I know there's a good chance that I'll end up upside down, but that's what makes learning something new so much fun. Before we get started though, please subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram because we have lots more paddle tales and tips coming your way. Paddle Tales is produced with support from NRS, Aquabound, Ontario Creates, and Bell Fund. It's day two of the solo open boating adventure. We are here at the Lower Madawaska. This is one of the best intro wilderness river runs in Ontario. It's been a long time since I've done this section, so I'm looking forward to getting back out there. I learned a lot yesterday on our warm-up day. Probably the most valuable lesson was the pain factor on the ankles, and so I've come equipped. These are not floaties to help me swim. These are ankle pads. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Colin, he saw the pain that I was in. And so today, he devised a nifty little contraption to take the weight off of my ankle. And I don't know, I, I think I might be starting a new trend. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I've only paddled the Lower Madawaska a couple of times, and the last time was probably 15 years ago. And when I did, I was teaching. And when you're teaching on a river, you're very focused on the people that you're teaching, and you're not really taking in the surroundings nearly as much. And so I was really caught off guard by how beautiful the Lower Madawaska is. How far do we have to go? 5K, 6K? Gosh, I'm gonna need bigger pool noodles for my ankles. You got this. I can tow you if you want. <laughs> so we are in the park right now. Yes, this is one of the yeah. campsites. Lower Madawaska River Provincial Park. And it's pretty cool. We're only, what, an hour and a half outside of Canada's capital, city of Ottawa, and really not that far from Toronto. But we're in the wilderness here. I mean, that's the incredible thing about Canada in general is how quickly you can get into the wilderness. And how different the wilderness is everywhere you go. You know, like Canada has such a variety of wildernesses. That's the plural of wilderness. Wildernesses? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm certain about it. Oh, there's that familiar sound. Yeah, you can hear it. That's Island Rapid. I love that sound and it just builds and builds as you get closer. Hope your nerves aren't building and building. All whitewater paddlers develop the skill of reading whitewater. And so scouting is a key part of whitewater paddling. On this trip, scouting was a little different for me because I had to change gears a bit. I had to look at the river from a canoeing perspective, which really meant from having one strong side and one off side. I'd say the biggest difference though, scouting on this canoeing trip versus scouting on a typical kayaking trip is these weird orange floaty things I have on my ankles. I think the Lower Mad has such a huge variety of rapids that you can develop all the different aspects of what it means to be a good paddler on it. There's some big waves, there's some tight corners, there's some technical rocks and there's a couple little holes and drops, but all around quite friendly and forgiving. 
The Rapids are, for the most part, very beginner friendly. There's some easy lines, but there's also some lines for the more experienced paddler to push themselves a little bit. On this trip, the water is extremely low. And when it's this low, the river doesn't have as many options typically, but you see more of the rock and you see more of the rock faces on the side of the river. I think rivers are even more spectacular in low water than they are in high water, even if the white water typically isn't as big. Open canoes are so much fun, and I love to have fun. They're difficult, they're very responsive. Even the pros fall over in them sometimes and swim, and so it keeps a nice light environment, and you know everybody that's paddling with you is just out to have a really good time. It's hot. You got, do you want to do a little roll practice and cool no. off? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saving myself. But I do want to see you roll. I hear you're pretty good at rolling. Oh my God, who told you that? So Ken, what, I didn't see your roll yesterday. What was the struggle? Well, I didn't get up right. That was the biggest problem. <laughs> I mean, truth be told, I used to roll thousands and thousands of times each summer. But really over the past five years, the name of the game, kayaking, has been don't roll. Don't roll, stay upright. Stay upright. The name of the game in canoeing is also staying upright, so. <laughs> and that is gonna remain the name of the game today. <laughs> and so the whole idea of practicing a roll, especially when I'm told that it's not that important. <laughs> it's satisfying. Yes. I think that's the only thing about a canoe roll is like, yep. wow, I did it. Yeah. Sometimes people need to see something that they're learning how to do in order to be able to accomplish it. So it was really important for Ken to see me do the role in order to be able to figure out how to do it for himself. So boys. You better hope you do it. <laughs> this is how you roll. Oh, so slow. Oh, so oh. slow and smooth. That is how you roll. <laughs> Watching Steph do the roll, a light went on. I've taught this a thousand times that rolling is not about power, it's about technique. She did it slowly, smoothly, and the key point that I was struggling with, she swept her upper body across the front of the deck. It looked like she almost wiped the nose off on the deck of the canoe. That's when I was like, you're forcing it up, Ken. You gotta get your weight much further forward. That was a trick. Yeah! There it is. <laughs> yeah. There it okay. is. Nice. It's about the nose smear. It's the nose smear. <laughs> it's the nose smear. The nose smear. I don't suck. Yeah. <laughs> One of the beautiful things about this Madawaska River is it's very clean and it's very warm. And so it's great to take a break from the paddling and just swim the rapids too. And some of them are really well suited for that. They're nice and deep, but still pretty fast moving. So you get a really fun ride bouncing down the rapids without any boat at all. People are sometimes surprised to hear that I really don't like swimming. I've lived my whole life on the water, but I don't like swimming. And I think that's because I like being in the boat. But when it's smoking hot out, you've been paddling all day and the sun's beating down and you're in beautiful, warm water, of course you're gonna body surf down a rapid. One of my favorite things to do, bar none, as a whitewater paddler, is boofing. Now boofing is when there's a rock downstream that water is piling up against and creating this mound and you paddle hard at it and you can use it like a ski jump. You can just like launch yourself up and whoop, boof, and that sound of the hull hitting the water, it makes a sound kind of like boof. So our goal was let's aim right towards the rock. The first couple times I think I was a little bit nervous and I 
It's like, oh, I'm gonna air a little bit to the left so that I avoid the rock, but then we just got kind of sunk into the waves and filled up with water. Whereas the next time I ran it, we ran it straight off the top. It's a nice, like, strong stroke. Launch your bow up and over so that you get that nice, satisfying smack. I came in online, I came in fast, I rode up nice and high, and it's all about that last stroke. I got a good, hard last stroke in, thrust my hips forward, and I got a pretty good boot. Ken did this beautiful boot move, and then on his next stroke, his paddle blade broke. There was nothing there. The blade had come right off my paddle, and so I welcomed my first swim out of the canoe. Yeah, tailwind. Mm -hmm. Listen, how does that uh, proverb go? I, I wish you the wind at your back and your friends at your side. Ah. And white water ahead of you. <laughs> I added that last part. <laughs> I like hiking and canoeing, not because it's competitive or extreme. I actually don't like adrenaline. And so people are like, oh, you like white water, you must be an adrenaline junkie, and it's quite the opposite. I like paddling because I like the people, I like being outside, and I love where the rivers have taken me. People who pursue whitewater kayaking tend to pursue more of an exciting adrenaline um, experience, whereas people who pursue canoeing, and especially canoe tripping, are looking for that serene wilderness, nature, immersive experience where they're not too bothered with whether or not they're paddling the biggest rapid, but they are concerned with whether or not they're enjoying the river. Truthfully, I don't consider myself a kayaker anymore. I consider myself a paddler because I love all types of paddling, whether it's a whitewater kayak, sea kayak, tandem canoe, open solo boats, stand-up paddleboard. I love paddling. I still love challenging myself, maybe not as much as I used to. Uh, I love the challenge of learning something new, maybe not the challenge of staring myself in class five whitewater. When did that happen? Is that recent? It's been pretty gradual, and I think it, the, the biggest transition happened when I had my daughter, I was paddling with the family and not pushing the limits. And uh, yeah, it just, it happened organically. It makes me really glad that people can change their love of paddling but not lose it. Mm -hmm. That it's a, such a sport for life. Although my ankles wouldn't appreciate me doing it all the time, these few days canoeing have been a lot of fun. And despite how foreign the whole experience is, to be in a big, bulbous, open boat, sitting in an awkward position, and using a stubby little paddle with a single blade, it all feels so familiar. It just goes to show that the gear you use doesn't define the experience. They're just the tools to do what's most important, to explore the world's incredible natural playgrounds, and to spend quality time with family and friends.